Frank, it's good to see you. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Well, I'm an ex-master mariner, uh, ex-lawyer, ex-technology CEO, and now I'm a ship manager. Always in the maritime industry. That's been 40 plus years now. I've uh, been called a disruptor. Uh, I'm Frank by name and Frank by nature. Well, you know, if you think about it, maritime impacts everything. 70% of the world is covered by water. We like to say that 90% of trade is carried, but we forget that 70% of the world is covered by water, which means anything we put into it, anything, you know, the rain, oxygen, the corals, commas, it, water en encompasses everything. So not only are we floating on it, we're surviving because of it. And we'd be in a lot of trouble without maritime and it would be a lot of trouble without the oceans. So maritime matters because without it, we'd have a very different world. We've, we're all experiencing the lack of travel, etc. From From my perspective, I'm always strategic in that I always look ahead. So when it first started happening, I wasn't so much concerned with how do I do my crew changes today, but what will it look like in six months time? Because this will be with us, even if COVID went away tomorrow, crew changes will be a problem for the next six, nine months. And the working from home aspect, I live in Hong Kong. We had the Hong Kong protests, which gave us plenty of practice of working from home. So when COVID hit, we, we had our systems in place. But it's made our routine be focused primarily on crew changes and then trying to keep the ships moving while trying to do it remotely. The whole supply chain of keeping the ship moving is under pressure. Connectivity ashore as well as connectivity uh, on board is critical. Our Philippines office and our Indian office have been working from home now for nearly three months. And these are not the greatest countries in the world for telecommunications. We all supplied them all with laptops and everything, but you, you've got to take care of the, even their air conditioning at home, for instance. So there's a lot of things we've had to uh, consider. And there's a lot of pressure. I think the mental stress side of this COVID has, has been sort of forgotten when everyone's worrying about PCR tests, when they should be worrying about just what is everyone's mental state of health? We've been quite fortunate that the local Hong Kong SAR government has been quite practical in that we can now bring in crews for all kinds of ships without any sort of PCR testing, although we get them PCR tested before they leave their, their home countries. And just recently we got permission to, to start bringing in the cruise ships with the cruise ship companies agreeing to charter planes in. And they will live on the ship and then go straight to the airport and go home. And we've now changed, what, 1,200 crew in the last two, three months. But it's scratching the surface. We really need what I call the Berlin airlift across the globe. We, we need something much larger. But every time you do a crew change, it's a success. Yeah, you know, this is a really important question. And one that I'm really keen on is that you have to find time out. And that means the crew need time out. But not only the crew, but the people ashore. We've, we've sent several of our marine HR team on forced breaks because they were working hours that were extreme, trying to support the seafarers. So finding time outs, Obviously, the, the standard healthy eating, healthy exercise stuff, embracing communication, better communication between ship and shore. You know, my own mantra is that failure is not an option. And it's not an option for me in this current crusade because we have to find a way forwards. But it's also failure is not an option because it's an opportunity to do better next time. And perhaps I'd like to just close by saying one thing. Seafarers don't want to be key workers. They just want to go home. They just need to go home.